Australia, and welcome to Life Support, the only do-it-yourself program that has all the experts to show you all how to do it all. I'm Life Support's resident doctor, Rudy, and tonight I'll be showing you how to make ends meet this Christmas with a wonderful, memorable, festive season tip for your family. And I'm Penny, the kid you were never allowed to play with. And tonight, I'm going to let you in on the most effective way to advertise today. My name's Todd. And if you can't tell, I'm a handy man. So a little later on, I've got a great DIY project for those of you who are lonely and alienated. It's a great do-it-yourself job. And I'm Life Support's modern woman, Sigourney. And shortly, I'll be showing you how an annoyingly attentive admirer can make the latest accessory. Can you afford to miss that? I wouldn't take the chance. So get those feet up. While we get the show on the road. One of the great things about living in Australia is going to the beach. And one of the great things about going to the beach is taking a dip in the mighty blue ocean. But what am I going to do with these? If the petty thieves don't get them, there's always a chance a freak wave will sweep up and wash them away. What I need is somewhere to lock my valuables whilst I'm in the water. Something secure and safe. And there's nothing safer than a safe. That way, when you come back from the surf, all your stuff will be exactly where you left it. There's a ton of advantages to being a single mum, but actual childbirth is a total pain. But there is a way to get epidural free access to your own income welfare stream in under a minute. Just head to your local casino car park, do a bit of window shopping until you find a gambling orphan you like. Then parenthood is just a jimmy lock away. No sane person is going to call the police and explain that they left their kid in the car to be hijacked while they played blackjack. So, you and your new son will have no trouble starting a new government funded life together. Let's face it, all of these kids need better homes and guardians. So, adopt a gambling orphan today because if you're after the easy money, single mother benefits are still your best bet. See ya! dilemma that a lot of modern women face. You've had a fantastic night out with someone who seems like everything you look for in a man. But the date's over, he hasn't called, and you're worried you'll never see him again. Well, it's simple. Accuse him of date rape. Now, if the police don't believe you, just say there's this weird thing about his penis that you don't want to talk about just yet. Soon, there'll be many spicy courtroom appearances where you'll meet eye to eye in a formal, sexy setting. And here's a tip. Once your hottie is in the witness box and under oath, ask your barrister to quiz him about his favourite foods, likes, dislikes, favourite movies and what he looks for in a woman. It's like having 20 dates in one gruelling courtroom session. And just remember, girls, if he doesn't want to see you again, objection overruled. Well, Todd, I can't believe that next week will be the last week in Series 1. Yeah, well, it's like they say, when you're having fun, time flies. Wasn't that clear? And because we're going to be away on a break, please don't send in any letters. Because there'll be no one here to answer them. That's right. So tonight we're not going to give you the address. Or the suburb. Or the postcode. Just to make sure you can't write in. Well, now that that's out of the way, let's have a look at the next segment. How's it? Dr Rudy here. It's a problem that confronts mums and dads every day. How do I know if my teenage son is gay? The teenage years are very confusing for boys as they discover their awakening sexuality, even when they're asleep. But as a parent, 
how do you know that your teenage son has a pillow that holds his dental records? Or whether he has deeply suppressed homosexual tendencies that haven't been drawn out yet because of a macho environment or because his male friends are so ugly? Well, it's easy to find out. Simply hire a rent boy. Pay him to come to the house when you're not around and see whether he can seduce your son. A first-class piece of man dotty will give you peace of mind for less than $200 an hour, plus GST. And you'll soon know whether the trust fund you set up for future grandchildren is a complete waste of time. And remember, if the red boy does manage to seduce your son, at least you've already met your son's new boyfriend. Banner. Although I'll accept that my son or my daughter is gay, but inside of me, I wouldn't feel comfortable. Besides being living shit out of him, wouldn't talk to him. But such things don't happen. If they happen, it's supposed to be a taboo. It doesn't happen over there. And uh, I mean, it'll be shocking for us if it does. If God forbid it happens, it's shocking for us. When you look at the person, you, how can you tell he's gay or not? Can you tell? Of course not. I don't think I'd be able to tell if the, um, the girl is a lesbian, but usually with guys, you can tell. Yeah, you can tell the way they walk and the way they talk to It doesn't matter what my child would decide it to be, I have to stand by them and support them. Even a blind person can see that the majority of people that work in Qantas are gay. Now, you, you've got to ask yourself how that has come about. You know, if you want to sell a product or a service to make more money, then you really have to advertise. So, how to go about it? Well, if you want to attract newspaper readers, then advertise in the newspaper. If you want to attract people on the street, then put posters on telegraph poles. Or, if you want to attract brain-dead morons, then just advertise on the television. But even then, it's really hard to catch a potential customer's eye. All day, every day, the average Australian is deluged with advertising and 99% of it goes ignored. So if you've got a service to sell, you want your ad to be in the 1% that catches their attention. So I've found the best place to advertise if you want people to really stare at it. Just hang your ad above a car crash and I guarantee that people will slow down and crane their necks to take a good look. Hello, Penny here. Tonight? Yes, I'm available. See ya. What time? Seven. Okay. No, that's good for me. Yeah. When you're going out on a date, you don't want to take along one of these. It's a pain to carry and it's embarrassing when it starts ringing at an intimate moment. On the other hand, if you lead an active social life, then it is important that your friends can track you down 24 hours a day. So why not do what I do? Get your stalker to carry your mobile for you. This is Raul. Raul has been stalking me for a year now. It's uh, 15 months. Really? Has it been that long? Now, what do the court orders say? I can't come within 50 metres off you. Well... Oh, <laughs> sorry. When my friends call, Raul will be able to tell them where I am. And if they leave a message, he can pass it on in his weekly correspondence. Janice has broken up with Simon. Well, I guess I better call Simon then. Sigourney, ready to go? I certainly am. Gee, Penny, that Sigourney's got some great ideas, doesn't she? I guess so. Just think, so many women have stalkers that they just don't use. I know. Like, they're a great help if you're moving house. I mean, let's face it, they're going to find out where you move to anyway. Too true. And who better to carry home the weekly shopping? I like to think of them as an urban Sherpa. Mm. Well, can you believe it, Penny, but it's almost Christmas again. I know. By the time you get around to taking the damn tree down, it's time to put it back up again. Eh. I don't even take the tree down anymore. 
You just leave your Christmas decorations up all year? Oh no, not the decorations, just the tree. I mean, it's very lifelike, doesn't need watering, and it isn't deciduous. Year-round green. What a great idea. Oh yeah. And here's Dr Rudy with another great idea for your family this Christmas. How's it? Christmas is just around the corner and mums and dads everywhere are wondering how to stretch the family budget just to make ends meet. Well, here's a trick from the old country that will save you time, money and take the hassle out of Christmas. You'll need a piece of horn, maybe a cow's horn, some sheep's horn will do. Ask your local butcher. And you'll need a big bucket of blood. Now just lightly sprinkle the blood on the carpet beneath the nearest window and then progressively heavier as you approach the chimney. Then just drop your piece of horn and wait for the kids to arrive, bright and bouncy at the crack of dawn. Oh my god! Blood! And a piece of broken antler! Someone's killed Santa! Sorry kids, there'll be no presents this year or ever again. Now, I've got to take this to the coroner, so why don't you sit here and think happy thoughts. There's one magical, memorable Christmas for about a dollar ninety-five. Merry Christmas. You may not know it, but for some people Christmas is the most depressing time of year. If you have no family or friends, the festive season can really accentuate those feelings of isolation and alienation. Now, you don't want to join the festive season suicide statistics, so tonight I've got a great DIY idea that'll make sure you don't end up in a box on Boxing Day. We've all seen this no mess, no fuss way to enjoy having a fish tank in your own home. Well, why not use this simple principle to enjoy having a no mess, no fuss Christmas dinner of your very own. First of all, grab yourself a video recorder. Now, since you don't have any other family or social occasions to film for prosperity, you're probably better off hiring one. Then, just bung a turkey in the oven And set the table with all the Christmas trimmings and your video camera. Now you're ready for your family. Where do you get them from? You want them to be relaxed in front of the camera and to be able to carry a decent dinner time conversation. So why not use the money you saved on not buying presents to hire a bunch of actors? What a nice looking family and then just video them enjoying Christmas dinner. Now come December 25, just pop your Christmas Day dinner tape in the video and pop your telly on the table. Then just sit back and enjoy having the family's company at this special time of year. To the family at Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You'll miss me when I'm dead. What are you doing with your life? We never see you anymore. You don't bother writing or, or ringing. See what you put your mother through, you ingrate. Excuse me, I just have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, nice one, Todd. All the time. So, 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 so take a tip from Todd. A little video, festive family, will leave you alive to enjoy the true spirit of Christmas for a couple more years to come. See? I've done the best look, that I could for you. And you just don't even come home when it's, it's my right. birthday. You know, when children sleep in unfamiliar surroundings, they can have an uneasy night. Simply sleeping at a friend's house can be quite distressing. So, if your son has a private school chum coming to stay for the weekend, why not make them feel at home in your home? Just provide them with the same kind of benefits that a privileged upbringing and boarding school education have made them accustomed to. Replacing the usual trundle bed with a simple rack means that you'll save him from missing that boarding school dormitory feel and will save you from having to think of ways to entertain them. 
Sigourney. I never picked you to be someone who's into hardcore s and Oh, I'm not. I'm more into hardcore B&B. Oh, you mean B&D? No, I mean B&B. Bed and breakfast? A weekend away in a secluded country bedroom with a full breakfast in the morning? Does it for me every time. Especially if I'm with that someone special. Really? There's no need to look at me like that, Penny. I'm not a freak. And there's lots of people out there that share the same interests. Whatever turns you on, I guess. Oh, look, it's the mailbag. It must be that time again. Excellent observation, Sigourney. And tonight, I have a very special letter. Really? Let me read it to you. Dear Penny, my name's Tarbin and I'm nine years old. My word. Tarbin, do your parents know that you're up at nine o'clock at night watching MA-rated television programs? Good on you, Tarbin. Well, my advice is that you go to bed now and let Mummy and Daddy explain Penny's advice to you in the morning. Anyway, as I was saying, Tarbin writes, I'm nine years old and I keep getting into trouble at school. My teacher gives me a detention nearly every day. What can I do to make sure it doesn't happen again? Mm, a problem I'm sure many children face. That's right. So here's what you do, Tarbin. Just grab a Polaroid camera and take some naked pictures of yourself. Then put those into your teacher's staff room pigeonhole. Once they're discovered, he won't be teaching at your school or any other school ever again. Is it really that simple, Penny? Surprisingly, yes, Sigourney. So there you go, kiddies. Give it a go and I guarantee all your afternoons will be free. With great advice like that, you're going to make a wonderful mother someday. Well, you're never too young to learn how to scam a man. Well, while I contemplate that, why don't you contemplate Dr Rudy's next segment? How's it? Dr Rudy here with a little advice for parents who are concerned about the proliferation of internet pornography. It is hard to put a stop to inquiring minds. But we also don't want those minds affected by a lot of the dirty images and nasty filth so readily available on the information superhighway. You could invest in software that screens out most of the pornographic websites, but it's easy for a lot of these to slip through the net. And besides, what about you, the discerning adult? Why should you sacrifice even more of your own pleasures for the sake of your child's development? Well, Dr. Rudy is here to tell you there is an effective way to screen your computer from restricted information. All you need to do is hire an internet bouncer. Can I have some identification, please? Could it be over 18 to enter there? Thank you. Better luck next time, Dimitri. There you have it, a sound investment. An internet bouncer will keep your child's mind unsullied and your own freedom intact. Excuse me, sir. Can I have some identification, please? Certainly. Thank you, sir. <sighs> Most relaxing. Bar now. I know people that do. <laughs> and they, don't, they only do that because basically nothing better deprived. to do. And they're very deprived and lonely. <laughs> and and yeah, de-sexed. <laughs> Out of curiosity, I went to the site to see what's it like, you know. But no, it doesn't interest me. Stick to the normal shit. Stay away from dogs, cats, cows, <laughs> shit like that. All that Italian shit, you don't really want to get into it, you know? So she sneaked into the room and she saw her husband, um, you know, doing something with himself. And watching uh, on the internet, talking to someone and she could hear the other person's voice. And she had a big argument, and she knew what it was about, and he didn't want to stop it. He was in love with the computer. <laughs> Every modern woman likes to look after the health of the family. But have you noticed that some family members have been getting a bit too porky for their own good? Well, you don't need to offend their feelings by pointing out that they're fat, lazy heifers. All you have to do is adjust the family diet with some wonderful weight loss recipes, starting with the humble prawn. All you need to do is leave it out of the fridge for a couple of days and then simply add it to the evening entree. And there you go. Seafood avocado becomes the family stomach cleanser for the week. In no time, the whole family will be purging away those calories and you can watch the weight fall off with every flush of the toilet. Now, 
To make sure their greedy little immune systems never learn to cope with your cunning family weight loss plan, just try a different type of food poisoning each week. Salmonella, botulism, even a simple cup of sour milk in a home-baked custard should do it. So go on, throw another prawn in the sun. As long as they don't see what they eat, they won't have to watch what they eat. Leaving you with a slender, attractive family that will be the envy of your crescent. Even the most law-abiding citizens never know when they're going to have to do time. And if you find yourself in a big house, it's a pretty scary environment. The first concern for most new prisoners is how to prevent themselves from becoming some hairy maniac's unwitting sex slave. Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. You can't. So, you may as well make it easy on yourself, and I'm going to show you how. When your special man returns home from a hard day's work in the workshop or exercise yard, the last thing he wants to come home to is a messy cell or haggard looking cellmate. So, make yourself look just that extra little bit special for him. I know it's hard sometimes, but he really will appreciate those little things you do for him. It shows you care. Run him a soothing foot bath. Then, put his favourite Jimmy Barnes song on the portable stereo. Roll at least three cigarettes for him so he can rest his tired fingers. A little bit of mood lighting to soothe those weary eyes. And a refreshing glass of boot polish liquor. You see, what I've created is a loving, relaxed environment so that when I do cop it, I know it's with a sense of genuine affection. You see, if you keep your cellmate happy, your sentence will fly by. And when you get out, remember, you weren't gay. You were just mates who had sex. I never get used to it, but time flies, doesn't it? So here we are at the end of another program. Yes, the end of our ninth episode. As good a reason as any to let Penny do the cooking. Penny? What's she going to cook? She promised to whip up some French cuisine. Voila! Fromage Sepagrié. Oh, you know how I love me French cooking. This is great. It looks a lot like cheese on toast. Yes, it does. Oh, it's all the rage in the top restaurants in Paris. Trust me. So make sure you tune in next week because it'll be our lost show for a little while. Yeah, it is. So we'll be pulling out all the stops and letting off all the bangers. We'll really be sticking it to the man and the woman. That's right. It's going to be a wonderful show, so you wouldn't want to miss a minute. Until then, be good to one another. And if you can't be good, be careful. Good, good night, night, Australia. Australia.